we're going to continue our exploration of physically modeled instruments with a couple of different reactor ensembles. Reactor is really capable of basically every synthesis method I'm going to show you. We could have gone into reactor for sampling, but as you can see here, sometimes the user interface leaves a lot to be desired. And with this first ensemble, which is called guitar, um, this is actually a custom interface that somebody made of a very old ensemble. So there's this one particular guy, and if you're ever in the reactor user library and you search for physical modeling, you'll see it's like the same guy's name again and again. He's like the master or the king of physical modeling inside of reactor. And when we just hit a couple of notes here, just want to show you that there is um, velocity sensitivity before I go back to my typing keyboard, but you can listen to this and it sounds really good. Of course, it's very difficult to emulate, you know, the strumming technique of actually strumming a guitar, but the raw sound itself is very convincing. And this is just unbelievable. I mean, if we go and we look at the uh, back end of this instrument, we can see that it's really crazy. And I mean, it just goes like deeper and deeper and deeper the further we go into all of this if we really wanted to. Um, and we're obviously not going to be digging any deeper here, but somebody has gone in and has really just kind of done all of this stuff and has made just um, one really, really crazy instrument here uh, that I just kind of wanted to share with you. So in terms of realism, this one's definitely more towards the far right extreme in that it sounds very realistic. We can go in and we can look at a bunch of the different snapshots here. And the one thing we will notice, though, is that for the most part, this can really only do like guitar sounds or bass sounds. You can obviously tell there's a lot of effects that have been loaded on afterwards. But the one thing I did want to draw your attention to is that the CPU on this guy is off the chain. I mean, it really is for a single instrument to be going up to 26 or 27 percent with a pretty long um, buffer size that I have set. Uh, that shows you those compromises that have to be made. And yeah, I'm sure the reverb is probably a good three or four percent of that. But even so, um, th what's going on under the hood here is clearly taking a lot of CPU resources. And that's the compromise that you have to make with physical modeling. And that's sort of what I think I wanted to share with you um, by showing you this. And again, it's very easy for us to tell that this is some sort of physical modeled instrument when we see things like excitation pluck position, right? We can choose where we're actually plucking that string. The string module itself with tone and sustain, the slap fret, pickups, all of these things are telltale signs that this is going to be some sort of physical mild instrument. And then as we move over further, we start to think, see things that we're maybe more familiar with with subtractive synthesis. We have filter that's been turned off, a uh, VCF, a voltage controlled filter, uh, that's been turned off, right? And that one we can choose different filter types if we want. We have a compressor that's almost always turned on, and in this preset it's not. We have the body filter. Okay, so we can, again, this is like the resonator, choose if we want a wooden body or just, I guess, a regular body. So maybe that's more for like an electric guitar. And then we have some options here for on wooden body to adjust resonance. And then we have a bunch of different effects, including something like overdrive, which we often do associate with um, guitar sounds, along with an EQ and a reverb. Okay, so this is the guitar. I'll leave it up to you to um, explore this one on your own. But again, this is really uh, one awesome, awesome instrument and something that's definitely um, worth exploring on your own. All right, cool. Also, just as an FYI to everybody, um, if you're not familiar with Reactor and you choose to download like the Reactor player, there is oftentimes a B panel on these instruments. So we have an A and a B and going to the B panel gives us a whole nother set of controls. And in some instruments, this goes really, really deep. Um, here, we just have some of our effects. So if we want to turn on a delay, We 
can obviously control that there from the uh, back portion of the instrument. So I just want to show that to you in case you were loading up some kind of snapshot and were wondering how do you control the additional effects. There is oftentimes a B panel um, on these instruments. It has nothing to do with physical modeling, but um, for the usability of Reactor, it's definitely something that uh, needed to be mentioned here. The other example of physical modeling inside of Reactor that I wanted to show you is an instrument called Steam Pipe, and this is Steam Pipe 2. Now, if we listen to this instrument, this kind of sounds like a flute, but if I'm going through and I'm looking at our different sections here, we have the Steam section. And then we have the pipe section. So this is modeling literally steam coming through a pipe. So you can imagine like a train, uh, one of those steam powered trains. And when the steam goes out the top, it makes a boop boop type sound. And that's supposedly what this is emulating. But we don't have the same sort of like generic controls that we would expect on something like steam pipe. Like I don't have something that controls like density of the metal. I don't see any words like that. Instead, what we see are more classic subtractive synthesis type techniques, but this instrument is really only capable of generating sounds that are going to sound like some kind of a steam pipe. So this one, especially when you start to adjust some of the controls in here, is definitely going more towards the other side of the realism scale into its more like experimental, so to speak. And a major component of this instrument is the reverb. And so if we go to the B panel, we can see the reverb there. And when we turn it off, we're now actually dealing with what's going on inside of this instrument. So we can start by adjusting the steam on this. We have an ADSR envelope. So it's as if someone's blowing it very slowly. And then here we have the generator, which is going to impact um, the tone of that like whistling type sound. So that's almost just sounding like a really annoying sine wave, DC. And then as I go to the other side, it's going to be more like just noise, full blown noise if we go 100%. So we need to go somewhere in the middle and then we can adjust the cutoff. So this is just a low pass filter here. that's impacting only the noise area. And we obviously have key tracking enabled, which means as I play up and down, it will try to stay in pitch. So once you start kind of moving things around here, it gets a little bit more dangerous. Now we can go down to the uh, pipe section. The all pass wasn't turned on there, so this is an all pass filter. And there's even things like an arpeggiator built into this, etc. But what probably makes more sense is to just quickly run through some of these presets because, as I mentioned, this is physical modeling, but not the sort of physical modeling that we've been used to seeing, where we can very um, easily adjust parameters, a lot of times based on images, right? So in the um, string studio, they actually gave us pictures when we wanted to flip through the different body types. Here, we have more technical um, expressions, but like all other instruments, you just have to try to break this down. So we know that this top section is controlling the steam. This bottom section is controlling the pipe. Okay, and we have some controls that, you know, may or may not make sense to you. And that's totally fine because I think with an instrument like this, the best chance you have of getting a usable sound out of it is to start with a snapshot and then just adjust a few controls. And uh, very rarely, if ever, do you want to touch the key tracking because that may throw off the tuning of the instrument itself. So let's go into the snapshots here. And let's see if there's anything like really interesting. So apparently this can um, emulate a guitar. Okay. It 
It sounds a lot more like an electric piano to me. But, you know, this is not going to be as realistic as what we just looked at, which is specifically trying to sound like a guitar. I'm just trying to think, let's try far, far away. And again, the, um, the reverb sometimes plays a bigger role in the actual sound here than the actual physical modeled component. So that's something to uh, keep in mind. So I want to try far, far away. And when you just click through a different preset, that seems to happen there. I'm actually not touching a note, so let's see what's going on with that. Something a little more sound designy. And let's just try one more. So more of a synthesizer type sound, right? All right, so I thought I would also share this one with you. It's physical modeling, but it's physical modeling using more common um, techniques and controls that we'd find with other sorts of synthesizers. All right, so thanks a lot, and you'll see me again in the next video where we're going to go really experimental with physical modeling.